Welcome to another Women Lead TV segment brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Michelle Burquist, your host, wait for it, of Badass Businesswomen. And do I have a badass businesswoman with me here today? I'm delighted to announce my featured guest today, who's Rebecca Ross, and she's the branch manager of Elite Lending in Hawaii and Finance of America. So we flew her in to the to the 50 states. Is that what you say when you're in, in Hawaii? The mainland. Like the, the mainland. She's in the mainland today. I love it. Well, Thank you for being my guest today. I'd love to hear a little bit about, you've been in the mortgage industry a long time. So tell me how you started. I mean, what got you into the mortgage industry? Well, I was in business before, um, in college. I was working part-time and then I had started my own um, tax practice. Mm -hmm. And a girlfriend of mine's dad owned a mortgage company and she said, you know, taxes are kind of important in this job. Would you yeah. interview? And I started out as a processor which was really a great lead-in to what I do now. All that paperwork. I mean, because I, I know how it works from start to finish, so it's yeah. really helped me be a better loan officer and branch manager, knowing the entire process from the beginning. Was it hard for you to leave the tax side of things, or what was no, exciting? not about really. You? It was not my favorite like, taxes thing. are super fun. <laughs> Let's go with that. But, but I, use, I, mean, I use my skill set because I have to review tax returns all the time to derive income uh, for yeah. people, so it's been helpful. I love that. Well, and tell me for this. I mean, there has been, have been so many changes over the years of, with the economy, I mean, good times for owning a home, bad times. I don't know how many the of us mortgage remember. meltdown. 2008, early right. 90s in California, that's what I and I know. But how, for you, did you kind of ride through all those different transitions? That's a long time. And to stay in the same industry, I'd be like, peace out, I'm out of here. I don't <laughs> well, a lot of people did, did flee, for sure. Yeah. Um, I think because I had for a while there, everybody was doing these with fast and easy loans where the tax returns didn't matter. Right. And so I think a lot of loan officers, loan officers that got into the industry during that time, they didn't know how to review income. Mm -hmm. So then when it got like, no, you have to look at tax returns to qualify people, they were like, eh, I'm game out. That's so I, uh, because I knew how to do that, it was easy for me to go back into qualifying people mm -hmm. the regular way. That's awesome that you've been in it that long. I mean, for you, um, you know, maybe give a couple of slices of advice. It's like what you've learned to kind of be there and stick with it. I know for me, I went through five mergers in 13 years in my bank career, and it's like I never got used to a job ever. And I think, how did, you know, for you, you're independent, you're on your own, you went through all these. What are the things that kind of helped you stick with it and stay there? Well, I mean, I'm a disciplined person, and I think my mom uh, taught me a really strong work ethic. Mm -hmm. So I always say sometimes, you know, opportunity presents itself in, mm -hmm. in work clothes. Uh, <laughs> uh, that? That's a great quote. Opportunity presents itself in work clothes. That's pretty good. I haven't heard that before. That's good. So you, know, you really, I think people sometimes imagine like, oh, I'm going to get into this dream job. Sometimes it, it takes hard work initially. Yeah. Um, well, people think they're going to make so much money in the mortgage industry. And yes, money can be made. But talk a little bit about that because I think there's good times and there's not so good times. And I in think, your... in, yeah, in any industry, you have to pay some dues. You have right. to kind of work your way up. It doesn't just come automatically. So I think people think, oh, it looks so easy, but it's, it's not mm -hmm. always easy in the beginning. I know you'll know this one, but I mean, for our listening and, and viewing audience, it's like, what are some of the things you've seen people do that maybe are not great keys to success in buying? and selling their homes. You know, when people think about it, I mean, I remember the days with no money down. I grew up in banking where it was like, that's just sacrilege, you know, that you need to make sure you've got kind of that 20% and then the stated income issues. What do people need to know? There may be some good tips for them. I know yeah. we could take all day, so give me a couple of them. Well, now we do have low down payment programs available because that tends to be one of the biggest issues is how am I going to buy my first home when I don't have necessarily a huge down payment? Uh -huh. So there are ways in which to get in uh, to a home without a large down payment. Um, and there are some, if you're self-employed, sometimes the tax returns don't work. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have bank statement programs where if you mm -hmm. can show your bank statements and you've had regular deposits from your self-employed business, we can use that in, instead of tax returns for income. Okay. So there's a cool. lot of different ways to qualify people nowadays. My biggest advice is before you go out shopping for a home to sit down with a qualified loan officer and really go through the numbers, understand it. You don't want to be scrambling after you found this home 
home um, and then trying to put the financing component into place. It's kind of backwards. And Go first with the mortgage lender. Figure all that out initially before you even start looking at properties. I love it. I love it. I mean, for you, tell us a little bit about you know how you've grown because you have more than one branch, am I right? Yeah, in Hawaii? I have three I mean, branches. This is huge because there's so many. Is it still a male dominated industry in mortgage lending? Um, on the leadership side, I think is what yes, I'm going to Yes, definitely yeah. on okay. the leadership side, it's male dominated. I've been pretty fortunate. The um, people that I've worked for, the men I've worked for, have been um, advocates for women. I never felt cool. held down. Um, I also didn't walk, I always felt I deserved a place at the table, too. Mm -hmm. So um, it was just, that wasn't really an issue for me. But it is male dominated, but there's plenty of space for women, strong women. I've met some of your senior leaders, and it's like, they, I mean, we're so excited that you're a sponsor of Connected Women of Influence. And I'm curious for you, it's like at the time when this kind of came up, it's like, what excites you about Connected Women of Influence and being such a, an advocate for us on women's advancement with well, us? I've always been an advocate for empowering women. In fact, when um, I've run branches on Maui, for whatever reason, most of my employees have been women. Mm -hmm. um, from the loan officer side to processing, I mean, processors tend to be more female right. dominated. Administrative, but e right. but even um, the sales, I've all and I've also hired people as receptionists and then moved them up to processors, oh. to loan officer assistants, and some of them have gone on to have successful careers as loan officers. And yeah. I I'm all about empowering um, women to move as far as they can. Sky's the limit. Lady power. Let's go with that. I love that. That's awesome. You know, I think all of us that are in business, you know, Rebecca, we find that those things as we experience them that are kind of those lessons learned. I never want to call them mistakes because to me, it's a mindset. But I know yeah. you've had a few. I've had a few. I could go yeah. days on it. But right. what are some of the gems that for you have really been kind of key learning lessons in your leadership journey as a, yeah. as a leader? I think um, the biggest thing is sometimes uh, trusting the wrong people mm. and and sometimes there's agendas that you're not aware of and, and I'll say this um, unfortunately women in the past have tend to I think feel so much competition with each other that they feel they have to hold someone down in order to get further ahead and I I'm here women I'm, do that. I'm here to say that we have to shift that we have to make that a new paradigm. Like we need to, there's there's plenty of room at the top. Yeah. Uh, we need to come from a place of abundance. Mm -hmm. um, we need to empower each other as women. And uh, there's no need for that. Good for you. Because, you know, I, I still can't believe when I hear women say, you know, um, I, I, I guess I don't see it as much because I'm not in corporate America anymore, but I, I did see some of that, that there were fewer positions. But even now, it's like there are, there are internal initiatives in companies that help advance women, and yet I still hear that women are probably the worst bullies to each other. To each so other. stop that shit, ladies. Let's yeah. just stop that shit. Um, did I say shit on TV? I think <laughs> we did. Is that okay? Because we said badass. We're good. Um, I love that. I mean, for you as a mom, now you've got three kids. I do. Children, um, loves, but... The mortgage industry has really allowed you, has it, to kind of be flexible it's as a been, mom? It's been a huge blessing. Yeah. Because it's um, like a real estate agent, the same kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You, There are flexibility in your hours. Again, my kids will say you work all of the time because I may have to take a phone call on a Sunday, but I'm at every event of theirs. I'm at all their doctor's appointments. If they're homesick, I can stay with them. So it, it's a... Um, a give and take on that, but I would say it's been a huge blessing. Oh. You know, you were, I got I got to do this because we were talking this morning this gold rush thing that yes. your daughter's <laughs> doing. I mean, describe it to our viewers. I was like, this is the craziest thing yeah. I've ever heard. Very experiential and yeah. You know, so girls I, are tell tell a little bit about it. Yeah. So I I think kind of the education has changed, um, and so they're really trying to teach these kids in a different way. Which is um, great. And so sitting them down and just lecturing to them does isn't always the best way to teach something. So what they do for California Gold Rush and teaching about California history is they take, one day they take over the entire field of the school and they create a set basically of that time in history and all the kids have to dress up and they get a stake of land and they have to create a tent and they have to set this it up themselves and they have to sell things to each other with the gold that they find on their land and and this is the, the groups are both boys and girls so boys you know, and you're girls. not you could be a gold rush digger yeah, if you're boys and girls girl that's super cool and is your daughter really into it she's totally into it and yeah. they have an all-girl girl group of course uh -huh. um, and 
So she's super excited. Who's going to be what would be the challenge. I think we were talking and I said, oh my gosh, if it was me, it's like I want to be the one selling the pitch shovels and all of that because that's where you really make the money from what I understand yeah, about the gold rush. Exactly. <laughs> Find the opportunity and fill it. Um, on the other side here, I want to kind of just as we wrap up our show, I'm thinking, you know, we always have those really hard lessons that we learn in business. And I mean, I could probably go on for days about it, but if you could think of maybe the two most impactful lessons that you've learned in business that you could share with some of our viewers, and especially think of the next generation. Yeah. I know we got the women bullying women, but say yeah. a couple but of- I don't, I wouldn't say this is like a hard lesson, but I think an important thing is that um, whenever you're in business, your reputation is your most important currency. Mm, that's a good one. And so you have to protect that with everything. Mm -hmm. And so that means always telling the truth. It means not being a flake and calling people back. It's kind mm -hmm. of those simple things, but it has shown to prove itself um, impactful in my business over the years because I think if you were to talk to people that know me and work with me they would say you know she calls you back she's honest always has the client's best interest at heart like the golden rules that's like yeah. do as you say you it's will kind I of, love those it's kind like, of simple are, but they it works time standard principles right of just business and life and things have changed too because you know I remember in the days where it was always you send a thank you card for meeting with somebody now people will send a text you're like <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, kind of the rules of etiquette have changed over the years, but the, the principles still apply. That's a good one. If you can think of one of the biggest, you know, kind of hurdles that you overcame as a female leader, what would be maybe one that is just really center mind for you and, you know, you might share what you learned from the lesson that you went through? Tough spot. Yeah, um, I kind of went over some of that. I mean, I, I, I can't think of it's okay. another one. Because there's just, there's so many. I know, right? It's like we're just overwhelmed on it. So let's go into this little badass businesswoman thing for okay. a minute. You know, I, I always find it funny with women that, well, I'll say, tell me why you're awesome. And they just hesitate. But then I'll go, tell me why you're badass. Like, oh, well, I am. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. You know, men, on the other hand, ask them why they're awesome. We were saying earlier, they'll just give you a list of, of why they are. But for you, like, what does it mean to you when I say badass businesswoman? Like, what is a badass businesswoman to you? I think a badass businesswoman is, again, believes that she has a place at the table. So my mm -hmm. father always said to me, like, Rebecca, just because you're a woman doesn't mean that you can't do everything a man can do. That's so awesome. I walked into every situation, didn't think anything different. And mm -hmm. sometimes I think when you walk in and you, ha you almost predestine or manifest something, mm -hmm. someone's going to try to hold me down because I'm a woman. That's not always the case. Just walk in like that's not going to happen. Right. You know, some people will say that we should be, you know, leadership is genderless. And I'm curious because I find so many women that go through these fabulous leadership programs, right? I'm sure you've gone through training mm -hmm. over the years and, you know, how to be better at what you do and who you are and just, you know, be the best you can be, sit at the table. I want to take the head of the table, but that's mm -hmm. another subject. Um, I'm, I'm curious, like, what, for you when, you, when you think of your leadership journey, do you think that leadership can be genderless? Like it doesn't matter if you're a woman or a man, you exhibit the same behavior and you should get the same results. Do you find that women have a different kind of set of, of rules and the impact they get with it? Because we can all strive to do, be a better leader, but I find women, my opinion is women get different results. Yeah, that's interesting. I think, of course, if you're um, considered difficult as a woman, right, you, there's a, word for that but if you're difficult as a man you're just confident exactly um, we'll just go with the words you're either a bitch as a woman <laughs> or you're revered as a man and I hate that yeah because it that's is. not quite fair right and I don't know how to change that But I don't really care okay there you go so maybe that's the attitude is that just you just be who you are because mm -hmm. I always remember when you know a man would say just don't be so emotional I'd be like I'm passionate and it's like you know what I'm gonna be a little bit in your face about it because I really believe in this and so I guess that's that's okay this table is really really moving there we go. That look? <laughs> that's better um, I think that is be you I think that's so super smart all right we're almost done my big question to you um, if you could leave our viewing audience with something inspirational or motivational no women are watching you've been in business a long time what are you gonna leave us with so I think when you're an entrepreneur and you start out you wear all the hats right mm -hmm. As soon as you can um, get an assistant, do that, and then you have to learn mm -hmm. to delegate. And this is the, do only what you can do. In other words, if your skill set is for me, s talking to the client, structuring everything, do that. My skill set's not best served pushing paper. Mm -hmm. So you have to do what yeah. you do best. 
I like that. And know what your talents are and mm -hmm. then hire. I love that. I love that. So we're done. Can you believe it? That's our oh, show. That you. is our show. Thank you for being my guest today. You're awesome. Wait, you're badass. I love it. And to our viewers, we'll be back again for another Women Lead TV segment. And for today, I just want to say go be nothing but you. Thank you.